everyone right now is talking about the solar eclipse like the video subscribe on april Let's 8th check it out. 2024 get ready for an extraordinary celestial event we're Coming about up. to witness a solar eclipse but it's not just any solar eclipse this will be an extremely rare total solar eclipse with intriguing connections to the predictions of the 2024 elections impacting oh, the united states and israel some even speculate that this could signal the end times Holy. In today's video, I'll explain the true meaning behind this solar eclipse and reveal its implications. And believe me, you won't want to miss the shocking conclusion of this video. In uh, any, any religious folks watching this video, I, I would definitely like your take as well. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff that is coming up, so stick around for that. In various parts of the Bible, we find connections between end-time events and celestial phenomena. Many verses mention the sun, the moon, the stars, and even eclipses in relation to prophecies about the last days. For example, in Luke 21, 25, Jesus speaks of signs in the sun, moon, and stars when discussing the timing of the last days. As a result, when people observe unusual or rare astronomical events, they often begin to ponder if the last days are approaching. Mm. To truly understand the meaning behind a sign like a solar or lunar eclipse, it is crucial to reflect on history explore biblical references to similar events, observe ongoing global events, and carefully analyze circumstances. Now, I'll say this, right? Like, uh, some of you are probably atheists, some of you are probably religious as well. And r seriously, though, like, if you're atheist, I would love to get your perspective because it's very, very good to get, like, different uh, perspectives and come together and talk about, like, stuff that's happening and find the truth, right? I'm personally Muslim. Uh, some of you are Christians as well. I would love to get your perspective. And here's what I gotta say, right? Like, a lot of the, the stuff and the signs are coming true, both from Bible and the Quran, right? And, yep, Muslims and Christians do believe Jesus is gonna come back. And, yes, he Eventually he's gonna come back surely but like if some scholar tells you that the end of the world is gonna be tomorrow that's bull squash you know that like you're intelligent like come on like nobody knows when Jesus is gonna come back nobody knows when the end of the world is gonna be sure a lot of the signs are coming true and you know what the signs coming true is strengthening a lot of people's faith which is beautiful which is good but it's like come on now man like nobody knows right and are you in the path of the eclipse though? I personally am actually I personally am by combining these elements we can discern whether there is a genuine warning or if it is part of a larger unfolding biblical prophecy. As wisely stated in Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. This simply means that history tends to repeat itself. And here's where things get shocking. God's character remains constant, unchanged from yesterday, today, and tomorrow. This means that God continues to communicate as he always has and address sin and nations as he has throughout history and the Bible. Recurring patterns emerge, especially regarding idolatry and a nation's sin, which God consistently confronts. Every significant prophet in the Bible who addressed that, thank you so much for subscribing. And I wanted to actually say this, right? We're hearing that the next solar eclipse like this would happen like in 2044. And I wonder when was the last time it happened, 2004? Uh, right like 20 years I feel like that it has a gap of 20 years but could be wrong right uh, we had solar eclipses uh, back then too so why is this one different Rest Israel's that, like... idolatry and sin was accompanied by specific signs and warnings indicating what would happen next reflecting on Revelation chapter 6 we encounter the symbolism of the four horsemen representing God's judgment on nations first comes a figure representing conquest or leadership leading to division and global turmoil. Next comes war, causing conflicts and disturbing the peace. Subsequently, famine follows, bringing economic hardships and agricultural struggles. Yeah. Finally, yeah. death arrives, spreading plague and disease. Damn. While these events unfold on a global scale, they also echo recurring patterns seen throughout history in the Bible. Mm. These signs often... Uh, I want to know, like, if any uh, Christians that read and understand the Bible, uh, I would love to know your perspective as well. Because, yeah, not denying it, the signs are definitely coming true. But it's like, 
if you are religious i guess you know that like nobody can predict the the future nobody knows when it's gonna end nobody knows when jesus is gonna come back i mean we have signs that yeah that when the jaw comes when the antichrist comes the jaw is the word in you know i uh, i believe in arabic uh, like we call it muslims we muslims call it the jaw uh and i believe uh could be wrong could be wrong but i believe uh the christians for them it's the word is antichrist but we both do believe that jesus is gonna come back and he's gonna be the one that will you know take care of the antichrist and the jaw and kill him uh right and the jaw is basically gonna be try to play god and he's gonna try to uh get the weak religious folks uh and get atheists to convert uh, and he's gonna be like, yeah, I'm God, worship me and all that, but he's not gonna be, right? He's not. Uh, so yeah, the signs are, yeah, surely coming true, but it's like, nobody knows when it's gonna happen. Arise in response to the sins and idolatries of a nation, illustrating the cyclical nature of divine intervention over time. For example, God appointed Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonian conqueror, to bring judgment not only on Israel, but also on neighboring nations like Egypt, Assyria, Moab and even the Philistines and Phoenicians in the Gaza Strip region before the sieges. Jeremiah, the prophet, mentioned a severe plague and famine that devastated the land for years, weakening the nations in readiness for Babylon's advance. In the Bible, Jeremiah 38 2 conveys the message of the Lord, stating that those who remain in this city will die by the sword, famine and disease. But those who surrender to the king of Babylon will live, they will escape with their lives as a reward. Hey, yo. Looking at recent events, starting from 2020, 2020 we witnessed all four signs plague, famine, Holy economic crap. hardships, widespread civil unrest, including protests and demonstrations, and finally the specter of war with Russia. These events not only impacted America, but the whole world. Yeah, These I events agree, serve but... as potent reminders of prevalent sin and idolatry in nations and signal God's judgment on the earth. Yeah. While yeah. this does not necessarily mean it is the last days, the signs are undeniable and suggest that significant changes are approaching. The, the, the way I see it is that if you're a religious person, you don't even have to worry about it, right? You, you know what I mean? Like, if you're religious, yeah, the signs are coming true. That should only strength, strengthen your faith. You shouldn't even worry about it. Let God, like God, God, God this, right? Just uh, enjoy life, L uh, love your loved ones, right? And <laughs> drink water, I guess, drink water, man. That's uh, that's how it is. Uh, the signs are coming true. But, but like, listen, still, no one can predict it, man. If any religious scholar, okay, tells you that shit's going down tomorrow, come on, man, like, yeah, really? Yeah, come on, man, like... If these are indeed signs of judgment, there must be reasons behind them. There must have been warnings or indications preceding these judgments, as God never acts without first revealing his intentions to his prophets. Now, let's delve into the significance of the sun and the moon in prophetic signs. Yeah, the prophets. Did you know uh, that the prophets and the messengers definitely uh, gave us like a lot of information, and they actually talked about the end times and gave us the signs. And a lot of the signs, for example, in the future there will be a lot of tall buildings. You know, you're gonna see a lot of uh, adultery and pornification, and, and there's a whole lot. We can state, we can talk about it for ends of times, and shit's not gonna stop. But but and it's like holy crap. Yeah, we're seeing it everywhere materialism capitalism uh adultery is on the rise right uh like only fans i just gotta say only fans bro like come on bro like you know i mean ai is rapidly increasing uh and, and it's also good and can be bad it depends uh the uses that people are gonna use it for or gonna you, you know what i mean because right now ai is surely gonna help a lot of people and it's helping a lot of people but it also it can go south and can go bad and then you know we have like a different enemy to fight because if that shit goes south holy crap then we got another uh another uh like uh enemy to fight right then everyone is gonna be like okay like ai is going haywire it's going rogue it, it does not like humans anymore and uh, now we gotta like uh, kill the air but it's like if it ever gets to that point i think it's just over at that point i did a video on the channel already about the ai and uh, it's kind of scary uh, uh, but it's kind of thrilling as well if you love conspiracies you're gonna enjoy it. that's apparently what we do on the channel ufo content conspiracies content sometimes like paranormal videos as well and uh, sometimes talk about the real life events like for example the solar eclipse as well so stay focused stay off focus 
In biblical prophecy, the moon consistently represents Israel, while the sun symbolizes the Gentile nations? Well, you'll want to pay close attention because things are about to get much more interesting. Oh, and yeah, another thing is that personally, I'm in Canada, but I do realize a lot of you watching, a lot of you are watching from the the states. Uh, uh, and yeah, this is an election year, so this is uh, gonna definitely be a crazy year for I guess the folks uh, in the U.S. as well. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of it. If you think that it's distraction, I I I understand where you're coming from because like it really can be but not everything is distraction but a lot of it is distraction and this is like a different year right because i feel like that a lot of uh, uh they're definitely gonna try to distract the public it's an election year as well so yeah man stay awake uh, stay the awake the book of genesis reveals that the sun the moon and the stars were not created until the fourth day okay. before that light already existed on the earth along with vegetation like trees and flowers which were created on the third day. It's worth noting that trees and plants depend on sunlight and rain, but the sun itself was not brought into existence until the fourth day. How could this be? This shows us the critical role of the sun and the moon in sustaining Earth's climate and ecosystems. Without them, there would be no ocean currents, hence no weather and consequently, no rain. In that ancient time, rain was not a common occurrence until the days of Noah's flood. Genesis 2.5.6 sheds light on this, explaining that there were still no shrubs or plants because God had not yet sent rain, instead relying on streams that rose from the earth to water the ground. So why did God create plants on the third day before the sun, the moon, or rain even existed? It turns out the sun and the moon had a completely different role together. Genesis 1.14.19 describes how God created these celestial bodies to separate the day from the night and serve as markers for sacred times, festivals, and seasons. They were meant to govern the passing of days, years, and the timing of important events. These celestial signs have particular significance in biblical prophecies, especially concerning the last days. Joel 2.30.31 speaks of wonders in the heavens and on earth including the darkening of the sun and the turning of the moon into blood, signaling the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Mm. This imagery symbolizes imminent turbulence, with blood representing war and judgment, while smoke and fire signify volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. These celestial events are prophetic indicators, as Jesus... I guess, like, everybody can agree that we're kind of, like, living in the end times, right? Right? Because they also have that doomsday clock that's very close to the mid... Very close to midnight. If you're a religious folk, I, I guess uh, the signs that, that, that we're seeing right now are coming true. The signs are coming true. The signs are coming true. The prophecy is coming true as well. I, I do believe that we are living in end times, but it's like, when is it going to end? Nobody knows, though. Nobody can predict it. What if, like, the end is, like in another like thousands thousands of years right maybe even millions of years you nobody really knows the thing is that the humans us humans have been alive for like a fraction i don't even think like the entire universe has been around they tell us if that's true or not that's another debate right but let's assume that it's true okay because uh everyone want to say like uh, space is not real some believe it some don't believe it then we're gonna get down to conspiracies not trying to do that in this video per se let's talk some other day about it but if what they say is true that the universe has been around for like millions billions of years then it's like we humans we have only been like on this planet for like a fraction i wouldn't even say one percent of the time that this entire universe has been alive for you feel what i'm saying so it's like we are very very young right this planet is is not that young but we're very very young in comparison it's all about the comparison here right so what if the end times are like uh you know thousands and thousands of years in the future and it's only now that we're seeing some signs come true but <laughs> this is gonna last for like way longer or maybe not maybe not maybe it's gonna end in a decade maybe it's gonna end in a few years or a couple of years couple of months who knows nobody knows is the point himself predicted earthquakes, volcanoes, wars, and other disturbances as precursors to significant events. Did you know that the 2014 to 2015 blood moon Tetrad had a connection to Israel? Well, here's where things take a turn. During that period, there were four total lunar eclipses, 
also known as blood moons, occurring in rapid succession, precisely coinciding with four significant Jewish festivals, forming what they called the Blood Moon Tetrad. However, many struggle to comprehend the significance of this particular sign, and its meaning remains unknown to this day. The number four often symbolizes the universal authority of God's Word. Symbolically, the moon represents God's protection and oversight over the nation and people of Israel. The reddish hue of the eclipse was seen as a harbinger of imminent bloodshed, a sign of impending judgment, given that the eclipses spanned a period of two years. The number two, biblically associated with division, was interpreted as a warning regarding the potential division of the land of Israel, referring to Joe 312. The Bible speaks of a crucial event that triggers the seven-year tribulation period and the judgment of nations. It describes a time when God will gather all nations in the Valley of Jehoshaph. At for judgment, specifically for their unfair treatment of Israel. Uh, what Jehoshaphat? Oh, okay, the way, uh, my bad for butchering it, uh, but what's that? Jehoshaphat? Like, what place? Including the dispersal of the people and the division of the land. We are witnessing nations dividing the land of Israel, a situation hinted at in the book of Joel. The Bible even points out specific nations responsible for this division, namely Tyre and Sidon. What you are about to see next is quite shocking. Oh. Sidon and Tyre were regions inhabited by the Phoenicians, known for their expertise in commerce. The prophet Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 28, mentions the king of Tyre as a precursor to the Antichrist. Oh. After the Greek and Roman conquests of Tyre and Sidon, the Phoenicians migrated to Greece and Rome. Interestingly, the entire European continent was named by the Phoenicians. Yeah, I, I think the Antichrist is like the 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 the, the jaw that we talk about. Uh, An Antichrist is a word uh, for uh, Christians, right? So Antichrist, the jaw, same person, same guy. Uh, it's just that the name is different, or maybe not. Maybe not. I could be wrong, right? I could be wrong. Uh, if anybody, if anybody knows, definitely let me know. You appreciate subscribing. If you guys are new, subscribe. Uh, if you're into conspiracies and UFO content, that's what we generally do. Maybe you can, after this video, you can check out a video, a video or two on the channel. And if you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, hey, you're perfectly fine. It's uh, it's a pleasure to have you for this video, and I hope you have a, a great ass weekend. Or or uh, if you're watching after like eclipse. Tell us what happened. Tell us, uh, share your thoughts for sure. Daughter of the famous Phoenician king of Tyre, Europa. Today, the European Union, the United Nations, and even America are linked to the ancient regions of Tyre and Sidon, once inhabited by the Phoenicians. These modern nations are expected to play a role in shaping and promoting the seven-year peace treaty, as prophesied in the Bible, which will be confirmed by the Antichrist. It is crucial to understand the significance of this and what it means for the future. Now, in 2017, two significant and unusual events occurred in America. First, on August 21, 2017, there was a notable event known as the Great American Solar Eclipse. It was visible across the nation, from the west coast to the east coast of the east coast of the United States. However, it's essential to know that an eclipse alone doesn't have much significance unless accompanied by other events that align with biblical and Israelite contexts. The following month, on September 23, 2017, another exceptionally rare event occurred involving the alignment of stars and constellations, known as the Sign of Revelation 12. On this date, the constellations of Virgo and Leo, along with Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, the Sun, and the Moon, aligned in a unique way, resembling the depiction of Revelation 12 in the Bible. Did you know that this alignment occurred only twice in history? Holy. Well, here's where things get even more shocking. Holy. Keep your eyes on these constellations as they will be significant again in relation to the 2024 eclipse. Oh my God. Revelation 12 warns us about the conflict between the Antichrist, known oh, as the, the Beast, beast. Yeah, and the Saints, yeah, 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 yeah. as well as the rebirth of Israel and Jerusalem as a nation. Both of these signs together served as a severe warning to the United States regarding Israel, specifically concerning the division of the land. Three and a half years later, symbolizing how this division may occur with the Antichrist, from, from August. August 2017 to January 28th, 2020, President Donald Trump proposed a century deal called Peace to Prosperity. He advocated for a two-state solution, granting 70% of the land of Israel, 
including the eastern half of Jerusalem, to the Palestinians, the ancient Philistines, historical enemies of Israel, for the creation of a Palestinian state. Three months later, the pandemic emerged, causing widespread devastation worldwide. This was followed by significant economic struggles, civil unrest, conflicts with Russia, and the loss of leadership for both Netanyahu and Trump in 2020. Surprise. It really is crazy, right? Like, uh, there, uh, the, the tensions between China, Taiwan, US, Russia, it's like, you, you know what I mean? And I'm obviously not intelligent enough and I'm not like knowledgeable enough to talk about that crap, but it's like, it's one of the things, right? It's, uh, it just takes one bad leader uh, to just destroy the entire planet, right? You, you, how many times we see it? We see it every single time in all nations, in all countries. It's like the country is doing so good, but all of a sudden one bad leader gets elected and then the country all of a sudden is not doing too good, right? The, the country is getting robbed, uh, the taxpayer money is getting stolen, all of a sudden inflation is on the rise, uh, and, and like jobs are getting cut left and right. We can talk about it for days and days, but it's like, you know, this is something that that happens all around the world like we see it happen it just it just takes one bad leader for a shit to go sideways amazingly instead of witnessing the signs of the four horsemen as expected we saw their signs occurring in reverse order additionally as a consequence of these events we observed the emergence of alliances like gog and magog primarily through the oil nations of opec aligning with BRICS alliances including china these alliances are effectively challenging the dominance of the American dollar in trade, leading to significant inflation and the imminent collapse of the banking system in the U.S. We were Shockingly, touching that, all these like, events yeah, were yeah, prophesied yeah. in the Bible about Israel and the end times. Moving forward to April 8, 2024, seven years after the initial eclipse in August 2017, another eclipse is predicted to occur. This time, it will not only be visible across the United States, but its path of totality will form a significant X shape across the country. However, unlike the okay, 20... I, I was anticipating that he was going to say like the entire world, but I think entire country means like US only. 17 eclipse. Unlike the sign of Revelation 12, this or eclipse Israel. will only cover the eastern half of the nation and will occur seven months before the 2024 presidential elections. Dull. Interestingly, just like the sign of Revelation 12. Okay, April. April is the fourth month. Uh, 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 11th, uh, 11th would be November. Oh, I, I think, holy crap. I think November is the election year, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, and April. Okay, so yeah. Okay, I see what he's saying. So seven months before and seven months before November leads us to April. April the 8th, April the 8th, it's, uh, but, but still, guys, still, uh, I, I think, like, it's sound advice to hide your kids, hide your wives, I think that's sound advice, if you're somebody's wife watching, hide your hubbies, hide your hubbies, or not, don't hide your hubby, let your hubby, uh, do, like, the, 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 the main thing, <laughs> if you don't have a wife, <laughs> go get a wife, if you don't have a hubby, go get a hubby, but, 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 like, and then hide him or her, uh, yeah, but, 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 like, okay, all right, all right. Twelve. The constellation of Leo, symbolizing Judah and Jerusalem, will align with the solar eclipse on April 8, 2024. This constellation is associated with the Lion of Judah, representing Jesus. So okay. what does all this mean in biblical, biblical prophecy? prophecy the, number the number seven often symbolizes completion, indicating the end of a cycle. In this context, it refers to the conclusion of Israel's 70 weeks of judgment, represented by cycles of seven years. This eclipse is not necessarily a warning about future events, but rather a reflection of past occurrences connected to the future. The X shape formed by the eclipse resembles the Hebrew letter Tav, which symbolizes a mark or seal. This letter is significant as it is used only twice in the Bible, including in Ezekiel chapter 9, where it represents a seal of protection placed on those who mourned for the sins of the first Jewish temple before its destruction by Babylon. And similarly, it echoes the marking of the doorposts during the first Passover in Exodus, foreshadowing the mark of the beast and the seal of protection over the 144,000 witnesses during the seven-year tribulation period. Therefore, the Tav mark in the United States signifies both protection and judgment, especially concerning the division of the land of Israel. If you enjoyed this video, 
I kindly ask you to subscribe to the channel. Uh, definitely let me know your thoughts, guys. And this is uh, one of the last videos that we've done recently. We had so many like insane videos and clips in this one. Uh, if you're new, I definitely recommend you check this out. And if you enjoy the content that we do, definitely subscribe. If not, perfectly fine. Uh, we love paranormal, uh, UFO clips, there, conspiracies, and sometimes uh, real life events that are happening. We'll cover that too on the channel. It's a pleasure to have you and see you there.